Yeah, so maybe uh, we could just start with a, a short introduction. I am uh, Abdul, Abdul Dafe. I had lead uh, a cohort before, the econometrics, uh, uh, introduction to econometrics cohort, which was uh, like uh, in a year, a year or two ago. So that was my first uh, book club that I facilitated. And um, um, I look forward to this one. Um, so I am a trained economist. Um, I'm interested in studying this book because recently I've, I'm working on health economics. And so I am doing some work with the Markov chains model, but I also have to work with a, a sensor da sens data sort of, and which are the, like the, I think chapter towards the end, the chapter on survival analysis would be useful. So I'm like, okay, this book is a good read for me. So this is why I, is one of the motivations. And also because it's using Python. So I'll also learn, learn Python along the way. Of course, I'd uh, read the, the, the book on introduction to Python for data analysis, but um, the, the book will also be useful to, um, of course, sharpen my Python skills. Yeah. and. Uh, I'm calling from Rome, Italy. Yeah, yeah, and I look forward to learning from all of you. And yeah, that uh, that's it from me. You know, if someone wants to introduce themselves. Hello, I'll, I'm David. I'm based in Austin, Texas. And I'm a musician and I'm making a career pivot into data science, data analytics. I did a master's of music business uh, from Berkeley and uh, Berkeley School of Music in Boston. And I did a project on uh, music engagement analysis uh, based from a survey. And that kind of turned me into a, a data enthusiast. And I just did a boot camp in data science. And now I'm here, excited to delve into this book with y'all. I can go next. Um, I'm Mark Harris. Um, my background, so there's a lot of history. I'll have to kind of keep it short. <laughs> uh, but my background is math and physics. Um, I actually did a PhD in applied physics. Um, and then I taught high school math mostly um, for a while. And I'm working on also pivoting into a more data-oriented career. Um, I did a boot camp as well. Um, I'm actually finding myself teaching some data training programs now, like um, helping teach some of the training programs for the company that I did the bootcamp with. Um, but yeah, I, I come from that very kind of math side of it. I'm interested in getting, like this book seems like a great opportunity to get more into the, a little bit more in depth, a little bit more under the hood than I have so far. And this book club is a great way to you know, help me find the time to, to read it. Um, so looking forward to that. And um, I think there was something else I was going to say, but yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, um, I could go next. Um, my name is Sozane. I'm based on Nepal. So my actual background is business background. I'm a business student. Um, though I'm a business student, I'm currently working in kind of an academic field. So a kind of research institution. Uh, I mostly um, work with data there, um, especially survey uh, regarding population on and different public health related stuff, education and all. Um, and I've got a mentor over here who um, is a PhD in economics, and he actually encouraged me to do this, uh, to join this book club. So this is my first book club. Uh, I do have a little knowledge on Python, but um, there's few uh, libraries such as Pandas, but I haven't gone much more deep, deep inside it. So yeah, that's all about me. I can go next. Um, this is Hamza. I'm a data analyst based on in Turkey. Um, I have a background in computer science originally, and uh, now I work for a consulting firm mostly on uh, international social studies. And currently, I'm um, 
my focus is on uh, like statistical uh, data analysis uh, techniques. Um, it's my first time joining a book club here in the community, so I'm really excited. Uh, nice to meet you all. Okay. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Dami. Uh, coming from Nigeria, I so I'm kind of like new to um, analytics and data in, in general. I'm coming from the marketing side of things. I uh, affiliate and more of digital marketing, but I'm generally interested in data science analytics. So I'm pivoting into that. I've done a bit of analytics um work with um, Google Studio, Local Studio, and some other um, no-code tools. So um, I'm pivoting into this to be able to get my hands dirty on the code side of things. I'm also taking a boot camp on Data Camp. I'm taking a career track right now on Python um, for data science. And this is my first book, book club in the club, in the community. And I, yeah, I'm hoping to learn and make the good thing out of this. Hi everyone, I can I can go next. Uh, my name is Diana. I'm based in Boston. I'm a computational biologist. I'm working at the Dana Farber Cancer Institute. Um, I I work with R mostly and I I think I got too comfortable with R and I always avoid uh, using Python so I kind of have to force myself to to do these kinds of, of, of things to, to actually uh, use Python. Mm, I'm part of the Advanced R uh, book club right now. We're almost uh, done with, with that one. So yeah, this it's gonna be my, my second uh, book club. Thanks, Diane. Okay, thank you. Good evening, good afternoon, everyone. John Ellis, I've uh, been active. Um, in two for a while, um, both the effect and uh, practical deep learning. I've also dabbled in a few of the other ones. Uh, graduate student, um, master's in computer engineering. Uh, I went through ISLR as kind of like my foundation when I was first getting into coding way back. So it'd be great to revisit the material and see it from the Python perspective. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, John. Oh, and I'm also in North Carolina. Yeah, I think uh, that's it, if I'm not mistaken. Or oh, who else? Yeah, I'm yeah, that's it. I, I think everyone has introduced themselves. Yeah, just before going, maybe I, I want to make a request. If there is anyone uh, comfortable with being a co facilitator because uh, I think some of the materials will be like really much heavy for me. So if someone would want to volunteer, we could like co-facilitate. Then, you know, it, it's going to be much easier on me. If not, I think I'll have a lot of pressure <laughs> dealing with some of the material. I don't know. It's just a request. If someone feels OK with that, they could just volunteer. If not, we we'll still continue with it. Yeah, and, and, and I was also thinking if there is a possibility, uh, maybe towards the end of the book club, we could work on a, a possible project together. That this is also something um, we could brainstorm on. It could be uh, a way to like make our hands really dirty on the material. Um, but this we could think of it uh, as we go along. Yeah, so uh, that's it. Um, uh, so I the slides, this are the, uh, the shared slides. So I, I didn't do any adjustments. I thought they were good enough. So I just uh, uh, use them. So that's it, the introduction to statistical learning using Python. Um, so I think we have seen the, the website for the book. So we could always go there and it's a good uh, reference because the resources are uh, quite uh, useful and is a good uh, place to look at. Um, yeah, so the, the, the way the book club 
each work. It's uh, each week uh, a volunteer will present one of the chapters from the book. Uh, this is the best way to learn. So uh, we encourage uh, each other to take uh, chapters. You could just uh, claim a chapter and then you 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 will be the one to present the, the chapter. It's it's a very effective way to learn the material because it forces you to read the whole thing and you know also make your hands dirty. Uh, of course, if you've not presented before, it's like uh, it's looks like a nightmare. But uh, I mean, the presentations will usually consist of a review of the material, a discussion, and a demonstration of the principles principles presented in the chapter. So for more information, one could look at the guidelines. So uh, we, 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 we have to discuss on how to go with the chapters. Each of the chapters has the, the theory part, and also it has the Python lab. So is it that we, we have a, a, a chapter, we have two sessions. Like the first week, we look at the theory, and then the second week, we look at the, the Python labs, or uh, how do you think uh, we should, uh, we should go, go ahead with the, with the chapters? Well, I'm not really familiar with the uh, approach that's followed in uh, the book clubs. It's my first time, I said. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, I think that uh, balancing between the practical and theoretical uh, sides would be a great thing. Oh, so, okay. I, so I agree with, uh, with the approach that you uh, advised. Any any other comments? Or? I'm also fairly. That was the other thing I was going to say. Is I'm very new to this community. Um, this is my first book club as well, so I'm kind of wanting to to learn the ropes a little bit as we get started here. But um, that sounds like a like a good approach to me as well. Oh, okay. Someone has a different uh, opinion or suggestion. Oh, it's like we have others joined later. Maybe so for now. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, maybe we can take another approach because. Um... The exercises uh, section uh, mm -hmm. in the end of each chapter uh, consists consists of uh, conceptual and uh, applied questions. So maybe uh, instead of uh, reviewing uh, a chapter, we can go through the uh, exercises directly. Uh, I don't know. I'm just thinking loudly with you. OK. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think going to the other side directly, then we are gonna assume that we've all mastered the material in the chapter or the theory, which uh, I um I think that would be costly to assume, <laughs> given the fact that you know, uh, I mean, some of us might read some portions of the of the chapter and need some further clarification. So in the, as we discussed, you could uh, also learn from others in the discussion. Yeah, or questions you have while you're reading the chapter. These are all, so whilst we are discussing the various sections in the chapter, so we could use that, one, one could use that time to clarify some doubts, some mis misconceptions, some concepts or theories that they didn't understand. So. Yeah. So maybe maybe one thing also uh, we could do is as we are discussing the the theory uh, and also the the labs, uh, the one presenting could also look at some few questions that might be of interest and discuss them, like some theoretical questions. When we are when once we're discussing the theory part, um, so each of us could in the in the Slack channel you could just post the questions that you 
you think you want us to discuss. And then the one presenting that part will try to be cognizant of that. And even if he, he can't um, answer that, maybe someone else could uh, give us, uh, could be more helpful. Maybe this could be. Yeah, so like I I I, th I think Hamza, you are you're really right the question. So so we'll take note of that. So the one presenting will try to take note of some key questions in in that part. And then, as we are reading, also if we see some questions, like I like I mentioned, we could also put it uh, in the Slack. And even if it's not in the book club, but as you are reading, you have some issues, you can just post it on the Slack. And who knows, someone else might be there to 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 help. Yeah. Yeah, so I it's like uh, uh, that's it. So the 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 line objective. So we just look at uh, introduction, chapter one. So the the line objectives is to recognize the various types of uh, statistical learning, which is of course the supervised and the unsupervised, and understand why uh, this book is useful. Uh, and the author will uh, go into details on that and be able to read mathematical notations, uh, which he 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 gives us, uh, and also give a overall layout of the book and be able to use uh, to find data used throughout in the package because he makes it easy that all the data is in the uh, um, ISLP package so it makes it easy so we just have to uh, install the package and then we are fine. I think it's only one data set that is not inside the package but there is our in the package so that will make life easier for us. Yeah. Yeah, so um, the rough definition, statistical learning is the theory, theoretical foundation for machine learning uh, frameworks. Um, uh, uh, so it uh, sort of makes connections between the fields of statistics, uh, linear algebra, and uh, functional analysis. So I, I think we have some mathematicians here. So <laughs> once the maths is getting heavy, they could always come in and help. So it deals with the, the problems of finding uh, a predictive function based on data. So which is, uh, you're expecting an output based on the data, which is the supervised learning. And also uh, cases where in you, you have uh, the feature or the, predict, the, the predictor, but uh, sort of you're not getting any specific uh, output, which is the uh, unsupervised learning uh, part of it. So supervised, supervised learning builds on uh, building a model to predict an output from the, the input. So it's just like some kind of, a, like he said, it's not a black box. So but so so, so you just put in a, an input and you expect an, an output. So he gave an example of the uh, predict wage from age, uh, education, and years. So the example was quite uh, straightforward. You know, he, he tried to predict wage using age, and then he realized that the relationship was not linear. It was non-linear, uh, sort of a quadratic. And then he looks at the relationship between trying to predict ages and education. It was it has some predictive power and also the the the, uh, the the calendar year. So then you realize that to have a good predictor for wage, we we need all the three variables and of course other variables as well. So so he he gives that example. He also gives an example of predict the market direction using the previous day's performance whether the market will go up and down. Whether it will go up or where it will go sort of, sort of down. So these were all uh, cases of uh, where he used, uh, he demonstrated how to use like uh, supervised learning um, um, approach. And then for unsupervised learning, where we have the input, but we don't have a specific uh, output, uh, but we are interested in finding relationship or, or structures that could give us hint. He, he used an example of uh, uh, to identify the clusters within a, uh, cancer cell cell line. So so this cancer cell lines could have a, um, a lot of different um, sort of cancer sort of predictive types or, or something like that. So using uh, grouping them into, so he, he I think he used some data reducing techniques like the principal component, but we'll see all, all those things later. And then he was able to cluster the cancer, cancer types and was able to get some insights from that. So this this were some examples we give uh, uh, in the book.
So if someone also wants to share some other examples also. So why why do we have to study this? So it uh, facilitates uh, transitioning from statistical learning. It facilitates the transition of statistical learning from an academic to a mainstream. So, so what they meant by this is uh, previously they had this book uh, called the e, e, ESL, Elements of uh, Statistical Learning. So uh, that book is basically meant for, let's say, a graduate level or at least someone with a, a strong foundation in mathematics and statistics at the level of graduate uh, program. So it was really so technical that it's meant for like uh, academicians. So so that was one of the motivations why they thought, you know, uh, writing a book that is accessible to someone with like at, at least an undergrad level of, uh, of uh, mathematics, linear algebra and stuff like that might be more useful. So this is what he meant by making it uh, more uh, mainstream. Uh, machine learning is useful for everyone. So let's, so yeah, machine, machine learning is like, um, it's now everyone, it's like, it's everywhere, it's, it's everywhere. So it's uh, it's a good way to learn the, 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 the foundations or the building blocks. Also the, the, the Python labs will be very useful. Uh, those that are coming from an R background, it will sort of help you. And those that are already seasoned Python programmers, it, it also makes uh, life easy and it's gonna be refreshing for them as well. So the, the, the premises, so for the, the book from, uh, yeah. So, so, so many, so, so he's like trying to make the point, you know, why we need this, uh, this, this book and, you know, given the fact that it is cross-cutting, you could use the techniques in many fields, not only in statistics or uh, machine learning, but, but in, in business, in, in the social sciences, you know, in, in biology, you could use all these techniques there. And so this is of interest to, to almost everyone. So statistical learning should, should not be viewed as a series of black box. So like we just don't say, oh, let's just give an input and get the output. But at some point we want to know what what is what what is happening inside the function? Uh, of course, we don't we don't need to know all, all the details, but there are some key points that we we need to know what is happening on 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 the hood. So 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 we presume that the reader is interested in applying statistical learning methods to real world problems. So this is a, a, a something that you know that's why hopefully we are all reading this book. So some notations like. And it's the number of observations or the sample size. Uh, P is some kind of the parameter, but uh, in this context, they're using it for the feature or the variables, which is the, the column. And the number of observations will be the row in a, in a matrix setting. Um, so this this we could always reference back if we want to, because for notations are, you know. So some symbols they assume, of course, the uh, element of and uh, all real numbers, like numbers on the number line. So, so, so basically the book is a collection of modern statistical methods for modeling and making predictions from real world data. So, 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 so it's, it's very clear that what we're interested in is in modeling, not, not in causality, like the, the, the effect book that John, so I started that book club with John as well at some point, Things were too much and I could not follow along. So that's purely causality. So here we are concerned with, with predictions. So this is very clear from the onset. We are not trying to make causal connections, but we, we want to just predict. And and this is very useful. Yeah. It's very useful. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a middle way between theoretical statistics and the practice of applying statistics to real world. So this, this is what makes the, the book uh, quite interesting and in the fact that it's not just giving us a bunch of theories and some mathematical proofs that we might never use. So it's uh, like trying to make our hands dirty with uh, real world applications. So it's uh, also considered uh, a user manual and it's self-contained. So that's some of us that have a very basic uh, Python knowledge. We should not be scared or worried because the book doesn't assume that we know a lot of Python. So it's gonna teach us from the ground going. So this this is what makes it 
much more interesting and exciting for for us that we don't have to worry a lot. Uh, oh, I don't know much Python. No, let's just uh, take it uh, like that, and we'll learn. We will learn Python along the way as well. So th these are the the main chapters. The second chapter looks at the the, the terminologies and some main concepts. Introduces some main concepts. Uh, so chapter three and four looks at classic uh, uh, linear models, you know, uh, regression, you know, analysis, classifications, and stuff like that. Uh, chapter five looks at resampling, like deciding on which of the best, which of which model to use. Uh, chapter six, uh, modern uh, updates to to the linear uh, methods, sort of. And chapter seven looks at the case where we, we are working with nonlinear data, what, what should we do? It looks at non-linearities. Non, non but for now, you know, to, to get started, you just install the, the, the package by pip install ISLP. So we'll look at all this later. So these are useful links. This is the, the link to the, 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 the website for the book. And that's the, the R version, the Python labs, and, and then there is a course on edX. So someone interested in following along, you could also sign up for this course. And that's the playlist for the various chapters by the authors themselves and some of the solutions to, to the book. And of course, that's the, the elements of uh, statistical learning that they had referenced in the, in, the, in the chapter, which is the more advanced version of this book. So. So, uh, so what is covered here is going back to that. We've mentioned that supervised and unsupervised techniques and the difference between the, the, the first edition and the second edition. So the first edition has these chapters. So these are the extensions. So the second edition looks at stuff in deep learning, also survival analysis, uh, multiple testing and, and, and naive base and generalized linear model and, and stuff like this. Mm. So, so you have supervised versus uh, unsupervised, regression versus uh, classification problems. So basically, these are the main uh, classifications. So under regression, we have this under, so basically it's just giving us the, the, the content, the table of content, yeah. And under nonlinear, we have these uh, chapters to, to look at. Yeah, and I, I, I encourage us to uh, start claiming some, some of the chapters we might be interested in as uh, like the best way to learn the material is to try to explain it to others. That's the best way to learn. So these are just some examples uh, of uh, problems that we could address using the, the techniques that we'll be discussing in this chapter, in this book. So identify the factors for some types of, of, of cancer, which is of immense benefit. Uh, predict whether someone will have a, a heart attack on the basis of demographic diet and clinical measures. So detect email spams, uh, classify a tissue sample into one of several cancer classes based on the gene expression. So, so this you could see it's more, more like uh, uh, unsupervised learning because you're not going to get some specific um, output, but you could get a, a useful hint from that. Establish the relationship between salary and demographic variables in a population survey data. Yeah, so th these are all interesting um, um, questions that you know it's of benefit to be able to address them. So th this is the data set that is part of the package. I think it, it's only the the USIS, which is uh, like in the R version, which is a base R data set. So that's the only one that is not inside the package. But the rest, once we install the, the package, we have all of them. So, so it's basically like we have all of them. Once we call pip install um, ISLP, we have them all. Yeah, I, I think that's that's the introductory part, you know, if you know, have comments or chapters you want to uh, present or anything anyone wants to add, feel free. We still have like 
still have like 20 minutes or so. Yeah, any comments, uh, suggestions? The way forward with the book class. I, I think also next week or next two weeks, we might not be having sessions because of the daylight saving stuff. So this is something also, yeah. Yeah, and they, 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 those that join late, if, if they don't mind, they could also uh, introduce themselves, if they don't mind. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening. Yeah, my name is uh, Dr. Shola Lua. But you can just call me Ola. Say Ola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that won't be mouthful. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm a construction engineer. I always have interest in data. Actually, I'm a project manager and I deal with, I use Excel, I use Power BI. So I've been having interest for some time. I've actually picked up our programming language then along the line. Actually, I joined one of the uh, reading club for RR for data science on this community. So then all along, I've always been interested in modeling. So I just thought that way. This is an opportunity for me to you know, actually be up to ski in modeling. So that's why I'm here. Nice to meet you all. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure yeah. to have you on board. So I'm from Nigeria, but I'm based in the Netherlands. Wow, nice. <laughs> so, yeah. I I have a question about the about the Excel. I seen that uh we have like two weeks per chapter. Mm. Uh, I check. Uh. In the yeah, in the in the Excel sheet to claim your claim uh the chapter. I how are we gonna divide them? Yeah, so I I think just like uh you mentioned, so so the, the let's say the the first week it's let's say the theory, and then the second week we look at the lab. The okay. lab. But that's that's up to us to decide. That's what we all decide on is what we're gonna do. So I think this was how the previous book club was doing it. Yeah. So you could just write your name and then you claim a chapter. Yeah, so any chapter anyone wants to present, like uh, Janita has a, a sort of sign up for chapter eight. So, so any chapter anyone wants to present, let me uh, check this. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, are are, are we gonna? go on like it is like every chapter we have two sessions or are we gonna go with that i think everyone is fine with that seems like yeah 
yeah, because the chapters are kind of long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, chapters are long. So, so it could be the case that maybe I don't know if let's say someone is presenting and the chapter is so long, should should they just try to have it in one week so that the following week we look at the labs or what should should they do now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think I'm fine with that. Uh, first day, we can actually go through the slides and maybe next day, we can go through the problems. Okay. So even if the chapter is too long, you want to yeah. like, I mean, even the chapter is too long to cover, like the theory is very long to cover in like one hour, we still have to try and squeeze it there or, or what should we do? It's, I know. Because again, if 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 the the, the 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 whole book club gets too long, you know, people start to get some adjustments in their time, and it's also something else to consider. And also, if there, if, let's say, so for some reason there are some chapters that which are very short that we can do everything in a week. Why not? You know, we could we could also try that. But I I don't think these chapters are easy to do everything in a week. I don't think so. In one hour, you can do everything. I mean, for me, it's, I'm waiting to see what these are like, you know, um, especially for the lab. Is that something that everyone's going to try to work through on their own and then they'll discuss it? Or is the presenter going to go through it? Um, I, I just, um, being new here, this is my first, first time with this group. So um, in this, one of these book clubs, so don't really have too much of an opinion yet, but just need to see how how this is typically done. Yeah, so so the way it's done is like if you were the one presenting, um, so you just prepare the material and you, you don't have to necessarily get everything, all the minute details in the chapter, but the the the, the core concepts in the chapter you just presented. So for the labs also it's just gonna be the same thing because they are sort of applications of the concepts in Python. So you just demonstrate that you know maybe running a couple of python codes to show and explain the 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 results and, and stuff like that so so it's you, you you as a presenter you have a lot of autonomy yeah you have a lot of autonomy uh, of course as you're presenting you know people could ask to clarify some doubts or to bring up some 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 key concepts that you might left behind someone could bring it up oh i thought this was Pretty really interesting, even though you didn't mention it. So, so you, you don't, you don't, you don't also have to master everything. Like I, I'm not an expert in this stuff. So, but whilst you're presenting, uh, you you learn a lot from the from the others as well. So, so so just see it like that. So, uh, even like 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 there's the first time you don't. No one is expected to know all the material. So when you are presenting, also you don't have to get the heck of all the concepts. You know, you present, and some of the concepts you are not very clear with. You could ask, and some guys might be able to explain it even better than than you. Yeah. You know? So basically, we are all here to learn. So just make it very flexible for each order, and uh, yeah, and, and that's it. I think I think it's also worth mentioning that most of the chapters don't have slides available so we will have to build the the notes and and the slides and the the, the github page for the for the uh, notes has like a like an intro on how to like uh commit your changes and do a a, a, a pull request and everything and i mean that that's so so important because i think only the first Two, two or three chapter have a uh, slide. The fourth one doesn't have it. So, yeah, but, yeah. But, then, but then it's it's very easy because the I think the Python for R because the theory is the same for both the mm -hmm. I that ILS R and ILS P. So even let's say there is no slides, and for some reason because of time constraint you cannot prepare your own slides. 
you could possibly use the slides from there. And then, you know, you could adjust that to, to what you want to present. That's that's also an option one could do. Or you could even use the book, you know, you just just highlight the key points you want to discuss and, and you, you, could, you could also use that. But uh, you're right, as you're preparing the slides, the committing, working with GitHub, you, you learn a lot. That's that's also yeah. a very useful skill, you know. So, uh, you know, why yeah. not? That's that's very useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and it's also useful for like future cohorts because we're just the, the yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. Like, so, so. so, yeah, it's also useful for future cohorts. And, you know, it's a skill that you need to know how to work with GitHub, you know, and, and all that is a valuable skill. So, yeah. But let's say for that, that should not scare anyone to mm -hmm. choose a chapter because the slides are not there, so not scare anyone. If you're not even able to uh, make the slides, you know, just present what you have from the from the book, like what you have highlighted and, and all. It's still, it's still good. In regarding the length of time to present a chapter, doing the two week plan or possibly extending a week or reducing a week, I think that can potentially be a per chapter basis. Uh, just like for example, chapter four is almost 70 pages and then chapter five is 30 pages. So you would think in theory, it might take about twice as long to, to cover chapter four is five. And similarly, so, you know, I don't know how much we want to prioritize staying on the pace listed in this spreadsheet or trying to give the the appropriate time per chapter to really thoroughly cover it. But maybe if, if there is an adjustment to the schedule, uh, the presenter of that chapter could, could put that into the spreadsheet and kind of adjust the, you know, it might be a little tedious to adjust the dates, but, uh, to add like another week or take off a week if there's a good forecast for for how long it takes to it might take to cover that given chapter but generally i think two weeks is an ideal uh template to follow to try to follow yeah 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 david you're right so yeah so that that should not be a big issue because we could always adjust it but but like you rightly mentioned two weeks we should we should aim for two weeks sir yeah we should aim for three weeks yeah if not, it gets too long. And if it's too long, you know, many things come along the way. And it could easily kill the momentum. So we don't want to go through that part. Yeah. So we, we try our utmost to be able to do it in two weeks. That sounds good. Yeah. I think I can take the chapter three, the linear regression, initially. Sure, you know, why not write your name there? <laughs> yep. Just, sure. just write your name there and you're fine. Good. Yeah. Yeah, and the lab part as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Hmm. So anyone wants to volunteer in any, for any chapter, they could just write that in here. And like I mentioned in the beginning, anyone who wants to be a, a co-facilitator, you could just let me know. This way that even if things happen to be too much on me and I cannot make it, the, the club will still will still run. Now we don't have to worry about that. So that's that's the whole idea about the like the the the, the co facilitator. Yeah. So next week that won't be uh that won't be any session. So we'll be having uh in like next I think three weeks. Like on the fourth. Yeah. On the fourth will be the next meeting because of the daylight savings. So but uh, so then I think after that we might have to do some adjustments with the timing because 
once the times have been changed, it might not work for some others. So I don't know what, what, what we have to do. So we're gonna meet in uh, like next two weeks uh, on the fourth. Then also the timings for some people in different parts might change. So this is something to handle. Yeah, I, I think if we don't have any other comments, we could just end it off here. I, yeah, if no one has any other comments. And, and thank you all for coming and for your time.